Hi everyone, today we are starting chapter 25 and chapter 25 is on visual merchandising. Today's lesson is visual merchandising and displays. Our objectives for today are to describe visual merchandising, identify the four elements of visual merchandising, and our key terms are visual merchandising, display store image, storefront, marquee, store layout, fixture, and point of purchase display. So visual merchandising is a continuation of our promotions unit. Why? Because visual merchandising is essentially promoting to your customers, but you're doing so in the store with the visual displays that you have available uh, for your consumers to look at and to display your merchandise. So visual merchandising is the process of creating floor plans and displays to attract customer attention and encourage purchases. Often this is going to be used as a sales promotion element. Like I said, it's part of the promotional mix um, and this is going to be especially true in the business to consumer market. Um, why? Because visual merchandising is going to most often occur when customers come into stores in order to make purchases. A display is a visual merchandising presentation um, and it shows different ideas or combinations of products to increase purchases. Visual merchandising also helps to define store image through the location, design, and decor of the business. Take a second and just think about different stores that um, are well known for their visual merchandising um, and creating their image and portraying their brand through their stores and what their stores look like. Um, one store that pops into mind is Hollister. Hollister has a very unique storefront um, with the way that they have the um, exterior with the shutters. They have a whole um, preppy sort of vibe when you walk through the store. Um, all of this is part of visual merchandising. So there are four components of visual merchandising, the store exterior, the store layout, the store interior, and displays. We're going to talk about each one of these separately. The first thing we're going to talk about is the store exterior. Um, it's also called the storefront. And like I said, I talked about Hollister, how they have a very unique storefront um, that is going to draw customers into the store and portray a little bit about the brands before people even come in. The marquee is going to be the overhanging structure containing a signboard located at the entrance of the store. So you can see here a marquee. A lot of times um, different stores have large uh, marquees outside where they can change the message that is going to be um, displayed for their customers. Another big part of the store exterior is the display window. That's going to be used to show the selection of merchandise available in the store. Um, this is also very, um, very helpful during different seasons. It can be changed um, to align with the season and also align with um, the different types of merchandise that changes with the seasons. Um, other parts of the store exterior in, include the store sign or logo, the entrances, any types of outdoor lighting, landscaping, and the building itself. The store layout is another key aspect of visual merchandising. The store layout is a floor plan that shows how the space in the store will be used and it's usually divided into four sections. So the first section is the selling area and that's going to present merchandise to customers. There are tons of different layouts that you can utilize to present um, merchandise to customers and control the flow of your customers throughout the store. Now there's also the sales support area for employees. This is going to be clearly marked so that people know it's just for employees. There's going to be storage areas to receive store merchandise. Customers are never going to see this, but it's a very important part of the way that the store operates. And then there's customer comfort areas that have other types of amenities. So think fresh. Uh, restrooms, lounges, and cafes. If you think about Target, they have this Starbucks um, area where people can sit and relax. That is all part of the store layout. 
Now there's different terms for the layouts that different stores utilize. Um, probably the most um, common is the right angle grid. This is going to provide highly structured system that that helps the flow of traffic. Think about supermarkets. They have the aisles that people will walk up and down and it basically is like a path that the customers will follow um, until they get to the checkout line. Next, we have the enclosed layout, and that's where walls are created to separate different shopping environments. Um, one um, store that's very um, well known for their enclosed layout is Bed Bath & Beyond. They have different sections of the store enclosed. So kitchen items will be enclosed in one area. Then in the next area, you might have home goods. In the next area, you might have bedding. So it separates those different departments um, and allows the customer to kind of immerse themselves into certain departments um, to get the feel for the merchandise that is available. The landscape layout is going to combine elements of the open and enclosed layouts, and that's going to improve customer and sales staff interaction. This isn't going to be um, as direct of a flow as uh, the right angle grid, people are going to meander around the different subsections utilizing the landscape layout. Um, and it's going to allow people to just explore different areas and different types of merchandise, interact with staff who might be stocking, things of that nature. Then there's an open layout. This feature um, is going to have open sales space and it's going to be bounded by outside walls. This is going to enhance visibility of merchandise, sales coverage, and security. Um, the Apple Store is an example of an open layout space. Now the store interior is very important. Um, for merchandising certain types of products. So the store interior um, is going to include the decor. So colors, lighting, floor, signage, artwork. Um, it's going to reflect the preferences and taste of your target market, but also is going to align with your brand. This is also going to include permanent items like the floor and wall coverings, um, other types of furnishing, lighting, and display fixtures. Um, a fixture is going to be an item designed to hold something. So um, different areas where you're um, different like racks, displays for shoes, things of that nature. Interior displays are strategically placed to draw attention and move traffic through the store. So the first that we're going to talk about is a point of purchase display. This is a special display usually found near the cash register. You'll notice that um, especially with COVID, um, a lot of people are changing their lines so that they are moving through a large point of purchase display. So I think of Old Navy per se, there's not multiple lines, there's one line and the cash register will call, uh, the um, cashier will call you down to their register when they are ready for you. Um, and while you're walking through that single line, there's going to be a lot of different inexpensive products. These products are going to be um, designed for um, people to impulsively buy, so in, like impulse purchases. Um, they'll have different makeup, they'll have maybe a drink at the end or snacks or candy um, and can be very effective in increasing the total check. Open displays are um, arranging the merchandise so shoppers can view and handle the products. You see here I have an example of different phones that these are granted old phones, but um, these are phones that are displayed so that people can touch them, pick them up, um, and explore the different features. Closed displays are going to place merchandise inside cases to prevent handling. This is especially um, used when you're trying to protect the product, um, like jewelry, for example. 
Then we have architectural displays that shows how goods look in a home. If you've ever been to Ikea, they utilize architectural displays where they'll display the furniture set up in an actual bedroom furniture or, or bedroom setting or living room setting so that you can see or imagine better how it would look um, in your own home. And then there's store decorations. These are usually going to be seasonal and add to the atmosphere of the store. Um, it's going to make the overall shopping experience more festive and enjoyable and can get uh, customers in the mood to make some holiday purchases.